Doing good? Ready to be in church today? Yes? Come on. Well, I want to take a moment and I just want to welcome all who are here today. We have our Cranberry Pers uh, Cranberry Campus live here. And then we also have our Meadville family and our Newcastle family tuning in with us. So can you guys make some noise for them? We're so glad that you're here today. Maybe it's your first time here ever and you're like, oh my gosh, I am in church. What is going on? Everyone's excited to be alive. Listen, we are just so grateful and thankful that you are here today. I know that sometimes walking to a church, it's like, am I welcome? Do I actually belong here? Do people know what I've done? Listen, we want to tell you right off the bat, you are welcome here. You are family. It doesn't matter what you did last week, what you did a year ago, what your present even looks like right now. We are so happy that you are here because we believe we have the best news. Everyone say best. The best news ever in the world, and it's called the gospel. And I believe that Jesus is going to meet you right here, right now. No matter what speculations you've had about Jesus or God, or kind of like, does he want a relationship with me? Who's this Jesus person that my friend keeps telling me about? I believe that you are going to meet him today, and you are going to fall in love with him. Why? Because he is so madly in love with you. Amen, church? Well, before we hop into my message, I just want to honor our incredible next-gen pastors, Pastors Ben and Alyssa Archer. Can you guys just give them a big thank you? We love them and appreciate them so much. None of this would be possible without our next-gen pastors. They believe in this next generation. I know a lot of people have a lot to say about this next generation, Gen Z, all the different things. Um, but we have a church that believes in you. We have pastors that, that believe in you. And we're so excited to see you step into all that God has for you. Amen? Amen. You guys want to jump right into the word? Come on, let's pray real quick. Dear Jesus, I just thank you so much for every single student under the sound of my voice. God, if they came into this place tired and worn out, Father, whatever's, whatever's right now, right in front of them facing them, Lord, that seems like a storm, it seems like trouble, I thank you, God, that you are a God of hope and that they would feel and sense that there is hope at the end of the tunnel right here today, God. We thank you for this. In Jesus' mighty name, we all said amen. Now, by a show of hands, how many of you have tried out for a sport before? Okay, intimidating, right? Can we all agree on that? Now, if you want to be brave, because I'll be brave real quick. You guys ready? How many of you have tried out for a sport and you didn't make it? Okay, hello. Yes. Um, I tried out for volleyball, didn't make it. Then I tried out for cheerleading, didn't make it. And so it was around my freshman year of high school. And I, had di I didn't make volleyball the first year, didn't make cheerleading the, the next year. And so I was, like, kind of defeated. Um, I just felt like, why do I even try? Why would I even want to try out again for anything? I'm just clearly not good enough. I'm not equipped um, or qualified to do any of it. And so my friends and my mom, they were, they were encouraging me, Mariah, just try out for another year of cheerleading. Just what, what do you have to lose? And I'm like, my dignity, that's what I have to lose, okay, to do it again and humiliate, humiliate myself. And so they ended up convincing me, and I ended up trying out again. And as I was preparing and working on the cheers and all the different things, in my mind, I just kept thinking to myself, I'm going to be so afraid the day of. Like, the day of, I'm just going to be so full of anxiety. I'm going to be so worried. Like, uh, why, why even do it? I'm just going to be so anxious. And on the way, when we were going to the actual tryout, my mom said to me, she said, Mariah, can we pray real quick before you go into tryouts? And I was like, yeah, sure. So we pray, and she just prays a prayer over me, thanking God that he would cover me with his peace, he would cover me with his love, and that he would have me in the palm of his hands. And so I said, thank you, amen to that. And I walked into the, into the auditorium. Everyone's looking at me, and they're like, Mariah, like, are you, like, freaked out, like, kind of scared and I thought about it and I'm looking around I'm kind of getting my feelers out like what am I feeling and I'm telling you I can't even describe it it was a peace that I've never experienced before it was a comfort that I've never experienced before I was like 
I'm not worried. I'm not anxious. I'm not fearful. I, I know I should be. I know that anybody in my shoes would be freaking out right now and thinking, oh, my gosh, I'm about to go in front of all of these judges, and I'm going to literally fail again and not be able to make the team. But I had a peace that didn't make sense. I had a comfort that didn't make sense. Every step I took, I had a state of calmness that didn't make sense. There's a good side of the story. I did make the team. Hallelujah. Okay. Hallelujah, Jesus. But the reason why I share this story with you is because today I want to talk to you how you can live a worry-free life. A worry-free life that you could actually walk in peace. That you don't have to just say, well, my family's stressed out and, and it just runs in the bloodline and, and we just are worriers over here and so we're going to worry a lot. I'm telling you that you could live a life stress-free, worry-free, anxiety-free and be filled with peace that doesn't make sense. So when you're with all your friends and they're all worried and freaked out, afraid, all the different things, that you would have peace. That when you walk in your school, you would have peace. When everything is falling apart around you, that you would have peace. That when your boyfriend breaks up with you, you would have peace. No matter what's going on in your life, that you would be surrounded by the peace that surpasses all understanding and you could live a worry-free life. If you're taking notes today, you could title this message, How to Live a Worry-Free Life. Anybody want to live a worry-free life? Come on. Okay, that's me. I want to live a worry-free life. Let's read what... Jesus says in John chapter 14, verse 27, this is Jesus speaking. Everybody say, Jesus is speaking. The Messiah, the Son of God, these words are very important. important. Watch what he says. He says, peace, I leave with you. So he's saying peace here, comfort, rest, actually I give it to you. Watch. He says, my perfect peace I give to you. He's not just giving you some peace. He's not giving you the person next to you their peace. He's saying, I'm giving you my peace. Somebody needs to, he needs to hear this today, that you have Jesus' kind of peace. You have Jesus' kind of peace. He says, my, pe my perfect peace I give to you, not as the world gives do I give to you. Do not, everyone say do not. Do not let your heart be troubled, nor let it be afraid. Let my perfect peace calm you in every circumstance and give you courage and strength in every challenge. Do you know that your portion, what God wants for you is perfect peace that doesn't make sense? Not just the kind of peace that we talk about here in the world, like, oh, that really gave me like peace and comfort. Oh my gosh, that's so good. He's saying Jesus is kind of peace. So point number one, how do we get it? How do we get this perfect kind of peace? Point number one is this, recognize that Jesus already gave you his kind of peace. You got to recognize that he already gave it to you. Do you know so many Christians today are begging on their knees, pleading with God, God, if you would just take this problem away from me, God, if you would just be able to comfort me, God, please, if you would just be able to give me some sort of peace, God, 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 God. It says so clearly in John that he says, my peace, I leave with you. My perfect peace, I give to you. That's already established. He's already given it. We have to recognize that he's given it. So what does it, what does it look like to have Jesus's kind of peace? What does that look like? It looks like when Jesus was on a boat and there was a massive storm, everybody, all his disciples are crying out, oh my gosh, we're going to die, we're going to die. Think about it, you're on a boat and there's a huge storm and like, like, hello, we're looking around and like, we're going to die. Jesus is sleeping on the boat, okay? Jesus is on a cushion. He has his head down. He's sleeping. His disciples are like, Jesus, what are you doing? That's Jesus' kind of peace. When you're in a storm and you could be at rest because you know who your God is. The kind of peace that we're talking about is also 
When Jesus is in the multitudes of people and they're hungry, they need to be fed. And all they have is five loaves and two fish. How are you going to feed 5,000 people with five loaves and two fish? You know what God kind of peace looks like? It's saying, thank you, God, for these five loaves and two fish. I believe that you're going to multiply it. Do that they were able to feed all 5,000 5, people and then some because of God's kind of peace and his faith towards God. I'm telling you, this is your reality. One last, one last um, example. The God kind of peace. We see inside of, in, it's inside of Matthew where Jesus is in the wilderness for 40 days and 40 nights. He's not eating. He's not drinking. He's not doing any of that. And the enemy comes into the wilderness, Satan, and he comes and he tries to attack Jesus' thought life. He's whispering lie after lie after lie. For most people, when you get lies whispered into your mind, you're like, oh, my gosh, I'm so stressed out. Oh, my gosh, I'm not enough. I'm just going to crumble to the floor. You want to know what Jesus did because he had Jesus' kind of peace? He rebuked Satan and he left. That's a Jesus' kind of peace. God has given you that kind of peace. Isaiah chapter 26, verse 3, it says this. It says, you will. Everyone say, you will. There's a promise right there. He's saying, I will. I will. You can bet on that. I will. He says, you will keep in perfect peace all who trust in you. All whose thoughts are fixed on you. So I, I want to ask you a question, some crowd participation. What is God's job in the scripture? What's his job? What's God's side? To give you the peace. A lot of you think that it's your job to figure out how to get peace. A lot of you think that you have to go searching here and there to go figure out how to have some sort of rest. I believe for a lot of you, your minds run and run and run and run. You have a hard time falling asleep at night. You just don't know how to stop feeling anxious. Do you know that it's not your job to get peace? It's God's job to give you peace. He already said, I gave you my perfect peace. You want to know what your job is? Your job is to trust him. Your job is to fix your thoughts on him. What does that look like? That no matter what is going on around you, your eyes are fixated on Jesus. What happened in the storm with Peter? I know that we keep bringing up storm references. It's ironic, but that's just what happened. Peter's in the storm with all of the disciples. And he sees Jesus walking on water. Like literally Jesus is walking on the water, on this storm. All the waves are going crazy. And Jesus tells Peter, Peter, come. Come out on the water. I, I want you to walk on water with me. And Peter, he steps out. He steps out of the boat. He starts walking on water. The moment that he took his eyes off Jesus is the moment that he began to sink. It's the moment that he began to drown. So I want to propose to you today that the very moment that you start worrying, the very moment that you feel like you're drowning, the very moment that you feel like you're sinking because of life, it is because it is the moment that you took your thought and your eyes off of Jesus and you stopped trusting him. We see it all over the Bible. He promises, everyone say promises, he promises that he will give you perfect peace. All who trust in him, all whose thoughts are fixed on him. Number two is this, and this is one of my favorites. Do not let, everyone say let. Do not let your heart be troubled. Do you know that in the scripture, it tells you to not let your heart be troubled, to not let it be afraid. If it's telling you to not let your heart be troubled, that means that you can also let your heart be troubled. It's telling you if you cannot let your heart be troubled, if I tell you don't do this or don't do that, that means that you have the authority and the power to not do it. If he's saying don't let your heart be troubled, that means you, you have the authority to not let your heart be troubled. I hear so many times when I, when I meet with people and I talk with people, I, I hear all the time, why is God allowing this to happen to me? Why is God allowing fill in the blank to happen to me? Am I going to live in worry and have anxiety the rest of my life? 
That's one of the biggest things the enemy wants you to believe, by the way. Or I've heard this. God took my peace away to teach me a lesson. God took my peace away to possibly teach me a lesson. Can I tell you, there's a devil for that. Don't mix up the characteristics characteristics of Jesus with Satan himself. It says in scripture that the enemy comes to kill, steal, and destroy. But Christ has come to do what? To give life and life more abundantly. So if you're sitting here today in your chair and you're thinking to yourself, why is God allowing this to happen to me? Am I just going to have anxiety the rest of my life? All of the different things. I want to tell you that God says in his word to not let your heart be troubled because you actually have the authority to tell your heart, don't be troubled, don't be afraid afraid. It breaks my heart, and I was there before, where you sit and you, and you have the blame game with God. I'm dealing with anxiety because God's mad at me. I'm dealing with, I have all of this fear because of that. All, you, you, just think, you just think of all the reasons. But if we open up our word and we look at scripture, it says so plainly, That Jesus has spoken to you and he says, my peace, I give to you. It's yours. Like, take it. Like, it's in my hand. Like, take it. And we sit here as Christians and we say, why is God allowing me to be fearful? Why is God this and that? But Jesus has made it so plainly in his word to say that you have all authority, all power and dominion to tell the enemy, no, you cannot have my peace. It's mine. I love the scripture in 2 Timothy chapter 1 verse 7. It says, for God has not given us. Whoa. Okay. God hasn't given us. What, what hasn't he given us? The spirit of fear. God's not the author of fear. That's Satan. There's someone in this room where you are struggling with anxiety and fear, and you have believed that God is just allowing it to happen to you. He's sitting back. He's watching, and he's doing nothing about it. Can I tell you, friend, God has not given you a spirit of fear, but of what? Power. That's interesting. He says, I've given you power. What kind of power? He's given you authority, the same authority as Jesus, to say, no, I rebuke you, Satan. Get out of here. What else has he given you? Love and a sound mind. Anybody want a sound mind? A mind that is at rest, a mind that can go to sleep at night, a mind that doesn't run and think of the worst case scenario ever possible to happen in your life all the time. He says, you haven't been given a spirit of fear. You've been given power, love, and a sound mind. So if you've begun to believe a lie that God is the author of fear, that God is the author of sickness, that God is the author of anxiety, that God is the author of depression, he just allows bad things to happen, you need to switch your thinking and look upon Jesus, the Messiah, the Savior, and know that he has given you peace. You have to. You have to switch your thinking. You have to. Luke chapter 10, verse 19, it says this. I know I'm fired up, but I'm just so excited, okay? I speak all of this out of experience. I I wasn't planning on sharing my testimony in, in my message, but I am a walking, living testimony. I was crippled by fear in high school, like, hello, okay? I shouldn't be up here right now. You might ask, why is she so passionate? Why does she keep screaming in the microphone, okay? It is because I'm so excited, Because for some of you, this is breakthrough happening that you've been believing for, that you've been asking for, that you've been searching for. And his name is Jesus. And the same person that rescued my life, the same person that gave me peace, is the same person that wants to meet you here today. And he wants to come intercede and let you know that you don't have to worry another day in your life. That's why I'm so excited. Luke chapter 10 verse 19. It says, now you understand that I have imparted to you my authority. This is Jesus speaking. He's saying, I've given you my authority to do what? To trample over his kingdom, talking about Satan. He's saying, I've given you authority to trample over Satan's kingdom. Whoa. You will trample upon every demon before you. 
and overcome every power Satan possesses. Absolutely. You with me? Shout it out. Nothing. That means nothing, by the way. For some of you in this room, you think that all these bad things are going to happen to you. you. Some of you have a fear of dying and, and a fear of all these different things. Whatever Satan makes up in your mind. He says, I've given you authority to trample over his kingdom. Every power that he has where nothing will harm you as you walk in this authority. You may look up here and think, okay, well, Mariah, you got this all figured out. It was just yesterday that I had to refuse to let my heart be troubled. It's a constant day-to-day -day battle that we have. Just yesterday I had something that creeped in. It, it was something that I heard and, 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 and my mind just wants to start running. And, and I could feel that my heart was just getting overwhelmed. And, and I, you, you know, you just sense it. And I stopped. And I said, wait a minute, I have a choice right here, right now. I refuse to let my heart be troubled. I refuse to let my heart be afraid. Why? Because I have met the person who has paid the ultimate sacrifice. And he told me he has given me peace. So why would I allow my heart to be troubled if he's given it to me to not be? I made up my mind. Today I want to ask you, are you refusing to let your heart be troubled? Or are you sitting back anytime something comes your way? Some storm happens in your life. Some news that you get. Your boyfriend, girlfriend break up with you. Whatever it is. And your heart is so easily troubled. You're so easily afraid. Do you trust God that he has you? Do you trust God that he loves you? Do you trust God that he has a plan for you, that you're not a mistake, that you have a purpose attached to you, a specific purpose that nobody else has on this planet? Do you believe it? Because if you did, you would not let your heart be troubled. Number three, and this is our last point, talk to God about everything because he's the best counselor. Talk to God about everything because he's the best counselor. It was my senior year of high school. And I knew that the Lord had spoken to me that I was going to be called into full-time ministry. And if I'm being real, I had no idea what that looked like. I had no idea what I wanted to be, what, what kind of job. Like, literally, I had no experience. All I heard was one word from God that he had a plan for my life. And that he wanted me to go into ministry. I remember I would tell people that I was going to ministry school, Bible school. And people would ask me if I was going to be a nun. I'm like, oh my gosh. If one more person asks me if I'm going to be a nun or a priest, I'm going to freak out. Okay. We even, like, during our graduation, they had this ceremony where you got to, like, walk down with your school's, like, name. And, like, be super proud. I didn't go to it. Because I was worried. I was worried that I was making the wrong decision. I was worried. I was scared. I was anxious, if I can be real with you. It was a one specific moment that I was at the ca cafeteria with all my friends. And they're, they're all talking about what schools they're going to. They're going to Gannon. They're going to Geneva. They're going to RMU and, and Pitt and all these different things. And they're talking about, oh, my gosh, we're going to meet so many people. We're going to be going campus and da 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 and all, all the fun things. And I'm sitting there, and I'm like, God, what am I doing? You told me to go to a ministry school. Watch this. My ministry school had six people in it, okay? Only six. So here I am graduating high school, one word from God to go into ministry to this specific school with six other students. And I'm sitting at this cafeteria hearing everybody else talk about their plans and how fun it's going to be. And, and it just is good. And I have that overwhelming feeling where my heart wants to be troubled. And anxiety wants to come and it wants, and I want to start panicking. And so in the midst of the cafeteria with all the loud noise, I'm sitting there and I, and I begin to pray quietly. And I said, God, what am I doing? What am I doing? 
And I just began to talk to him. It was, it was raw and it was real. It wasn't some like, oh, holy thou, God, thank you. It was literally, it was real, like, God, what am I doing? And I heard him say so specific to me. He said, Mariah, if you could see what I have planned, if you could see what your future looks like, you would not be worried one more moment. And I felt this peace whoosh, wash over me. And I knew in my heart that he was telling the truth, even though I couldn't see it. What if that girl at the cafeteria said, okay, my heart's troubled, I'm out. I'm going to do what everybody else is doing. I'm going to go to that college. I'm going to go to all of these parties. I'm going to go do all these different things. God, I'm out. I don't believe what you said is true. I would not be standing here before you. I don't even want to picture what my life would have been like. I share this story with you because I want you to know that the replacement of worry is to pray. The replacement of worry is to talk to him. He doesn't need you to be some holy person with all this perfect speech and all this perfect everything. He wants a real raw person to talk to him because he wants relationship with you. I love it. it says in Philippians chapter 4, verse 6 through 7, it says this. It says, don't worry about anything. Instead, pray about everything. The replacement of worry is to pray. Tell God what you need and thank him for what he's done. Then, oh, there it is. Then you experience whose kind of peace? God's kind of peace. There it is again. Which exceeds anything we can understand. His peace will guard your hearts. It will guard your hearts. Remember, don't let your heart be troubled. He says his peace will guard your heart and minds as you live in Christ. Why do a lot of people go to see therapists? It's to talk things out. It's to talk and talk and talk and to get everything out. Talk and talk and get everything out. You gotta talk it out. I'm a verbal processor, I don't know if you are, but I just need to talk things out. And then in hopes that the therapist would look at you back and say, hey, I have some solutions for you. I actually have answers. Do you know that God himself is the greatest therapist that you can have? He's the best person to talk to. He's the best person to trust with your deepest, darkest secrets. And here's the thing. When you look at him and you're hoping that he has an answer, he already has it. I'm talking about the creator of the universe. I'm talking about the one who's formed you in your mother's womb. I'm talking about the one who painted the sky with his hand. I'm talking about the one who hung the stars one by one and gave them a name. I'm talking about that God, that he wants to talk with you. You know, as we close here today, you might be in a place where you're stressed out and you're worried. You're thinking, you're thinking. And you're thinking some more. And maybe you're here today and you feel like you've never even told anybody that you're even struggling in this area with worry. I believe that today, going forward, that you can live a worry-free life. But here's the thing. Jesus is the only person. Everyone say only only person where you can find it. Buddha can't give you peace. Muhammad can't give you peace. Crystals can't give you peace. Any substance or drug can't give you peace. Your boyfriend and girlfriend where you're searching and searching from guy to guy to girl to girl, hoping that they will give you some peace and fill the void. They won't. I'm sure you've already recognized that. I'm sure you've already come to that conclusion. Because we're all on the search. We're all looking. But Jesus is the only one. So my question for you today is how much longer do you want to live in fear, anxiety, and worry? 
and believe that this is just how life is. Because I, if Jesus told me 2,000 years ago that he left me with some peace, Jesus' kind of peace, I'm taking it. I'm taking it. I don't, I don't care what comes my way. I don't care if, if all of these storms and all of these problems and everything comes my way. I, I don't care. I refuse to let my heart be troubled. I refuse to let it be afraid. I refuse. And so this week, I can promise you there's going to be something that comes your way. If it hasn't already this week, I'm sure it'll come. Where something's going to try to take your peace from you. It's going to try to trouble your heart. It's going to try to put worry, fear, and anxiety on you. And you have the choice. We're not going to blame God anymore and say, God, why did you take my peace from me? God, are you trying to teach me a lesson? Absolutely not. He teaches his, he teaches his children through his word. Not through problems and putting hard things on you. Do you think your parents would put hard problems on you? And try to make you sick, try to make you anxious to teach you a lesson? That's called abuse, by the way. Okay? If someone tries to hurt you and put harm on you to teach you a lesson, that sounds like abuse. And that is not a characteristic of Jesus. So when I ask you, do you refuse to let your heart be troubled going forward? Do you want to live a worry-free life? No matter what's even happening right now, I don't know about you, but I want that. I want that as my portion. And so here's our takeaways today. If you want to live a worry-free life, you've got to recognize that you already got it. You've got to recognize that you already got Jesus' kind of peace. Number two, you've got to not let your heart be troubled. Walk in your authority. What does that mean? It means speak out of your mouth and say, no, I refuse to be troubled right now. I thank you, God, that you've given me your peace that surpasses all understanding. Number three, we have to talk with God. He is the best counselor. He is the best therapist. And he wants to talk back to you. He's not silent, by the way. He has good things for you. I said he has good things for you. He has a plan for you. He has a purpose for you. And you are not a mistake. 